All right, Warriors, welcome back. <laughs> I'm laughing right now because, oh, we're fixing to dive in deep. And brace yourselves. And if you're a narcissist, you might you, you might want to opt out of this one. You, you, you really, this one's going to fuck you up. <laughs> I'm going to remind you of a, a war cry, a petition. And, and man, it was like WTF. You feel me? Before we uh, get started with this badass walk on the beach, let's do a breathing exercise. It's going to take five seconds, five Mississippis. And what we're going to do is just reset our minds so that we don't spend most of this time with you self-convicting. I need you to look at this from the eyes of an eagle. Looking down at yourself, instead of replaying it with your own bottom lip shaking and re-feeling an emotion. It's no longer your reality. So warriors, we're going to work on this. And this breathing exercise also happens to benefit you when you have a narcissist in front of you trying to provoke you. Poke, 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 poke. Yeah. Smell my finger. I need you to move from emotion and feelings to logic and understand what you're dealing with. It's punk. How do you say punk for female? Punkerist? Punkerista? <laughs> <laughs> five seconds, man. Let's do this. Hold our breath for five, and then we're going to release together. And then don't forget, shake that shit off. It, it, it was never yours, boo-boo. Never yours to hang on to. Come on, let's do this. Release slowly. All right. Shake that shit off, y'all. I don't know if y'all seen this out of narcs but how they'll cry on cue them, them alligator tears and it's almost close to the ugly cry that gets you to kind of reconsider shit and appeal to your kinder self to your to the old you you see the old you may have hesitated a little bit or released your foot from their throat so to speak, in a Christian kind of way. You feel me? I, you know, I don't want to encourage physicality here. The narcs would do this to appeal to that, that good nature in you. And it falls on deaf ears and it's going to fuck up the hoover because they're not expecting you to have decided you know what, I need to look into this shit because it, it, this isn't how people operate. This isn't normal. And for those of you who had, say, an advanced degree in picking up the dots connecting, it's because you grew up in the insane asylum and therefore identified it more readily. The problem was you, you were dealing with one with more experience in the community and Upon rejection, 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 and rejection, rejection, they kind of evolve. And that's why you fell for it. But understand, now that they're back out in the community, back out on the streets, hoeing, they're running into zero commitment. Pump and dumps are everywhere. Them are free, dime a dozen. Matter of fact, if you could put kitty cat on the stock market, it plummet. It's zero. 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 It's free. It's free. And so understanding that commitment eludes everyone, even those of you who feel like, you know what, I'm well-rounded. I have a lot to offer. It's risk. It's a major risk in today's society, societal illicit dysfunction. So, warriors, 
narcissists, once they figure out you're on to them, I don't know if y'all have ever seen the... <laughs> and, and when they've had enough, they realize they're not getting nowhere. <laughs> or, <laughs> they're mid-stride and their phone rings. And it's the new supply. So they all of a sudden... <laughs> Yeah, hello? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> Mind-boggling. The chameleon shows itself. And see, once you see that, you can't ever unsee it. And it was done in front of you ever so casually because narcissists still believe in the old you that would have just pretended along with the narcissist as if it never happened. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Mm -mm, that's, mm, no, n me? She, you know I'm shy. Oh, hell to the now now. You know Chico wanna, uh, 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 I got questions. <laughs> I got some questions. <laughs> Look, narcissists are looking for a live-in therapist. It's why I called y'all emotional tampons for a little while. That's what you were. Mm-hmm, yeah. And, and once you caught on now, once you caught on, this is the only validation you needed to know. A nurse with a purse no longer lives here. Mm-mm. No, no, it, it became transactional relationship. And once you surmise that the rate of return on that investment wasn't paying off a dividend nor... Reciprocatious? Wasn't even an equal portions? No, you had enough. You threw the towel in. But what makes you fucking think that a narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, or borderline ain't gonna hoover your ass? You were the most delicious, bestest thing on the menu with your bad self. Do you know how you know how many it requires to be in a harem to provide the amount of well rounded stability? Protection, supply, warriors, that's rare. That's why you need to keep your shit zipped up. It's why it's worth defending. Better guard that gold kitty cat, that trophy dick. Because <laughs> if you ain't careful, you create stalkers with that thing. Yeah. You are the currency of choice. And yes, reverse narcology is a bitch. Karma is a bitch. Because it turns out a reverse trauma bond is created. They want it back. Yeah, I say it. Because you're not a soulmate, twin flame. You weren't promised to someone. You ain't falling for that shit again, are you? Look at me. Shh. Hey, acting like you're getting bored and shit. Better put that crap on pause. Go wet your face and bring your ass back. And look, I want to remind you about that conversation. That war cry that you made. Yeah, I didn't forget about that. When, when you screamed, what the fuck? Either verbally out loud or in your mind... I want you to remember this because you did it with all your might. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and uh, this is what happened. God saw your struggle. Heard that war cry and said, well, sounds like a prayer request to me. And uh, clarity hits you like a holy bitch slap. I mean, a gut buster crippled you because the dots connected in such mass that it was like a plethora of stars. So many. And at one time in your life, you heard how Heavenly Father named 
every star. And now you kind of have an idea of how that could really be. Because Holy Father gave you so many dots to connect, it was almost like the stars in heaven. And they all made sense. Everyone named and had a puzzle piece to fill that made sense. You identified with each and every dot. It connected. Now, you weren't ready for that. But let me tell you, that holy bitch slap. It opened your eyes in, uh, to another awareness. And that awareness is, what do I do now? Everybody talks about purpose. What do I do now? All right. Grab your dusty Bible. Go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Look it up. I want you to know it's between, if I recall correctly, between Genesis and Revelations. Habakkuk. I'll wait for you. Put, the, put, put it on pause. We groan here. Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 13. There's only three, chap, three, three, uh, three, three chapters to this whole book. Uh, and while you're doing that, remember the question. What do we do now? What, what, what comes after this knowledge? Besides applying it, being able to identify fakes, imposters, and your own kind. Is there any more to this mission? And, and, and the obvious, teach by actions. Because you fully aware how words are empty until applied. Then it's power. Habakkuk 1, chapter 1. Verse 13. And this is out of the uh, complete Jewish Bible. Your eyes are too pure to see evil. You cannot countenance oppression. So why do you countenance traitors? Why are you silent when evil people swallow up those, those more righteous than thy? Now, this is the Ange uh, Evangelical Heritage Version Bible. You whose eyes are too pure to tolerate evil... You who are not able to condone wrongdoing, why do you put up with treacherous people? Why do you keep silent when the wicked swallow up those who are more righteous than they are? The King James Version. You are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than thee. New Life Version Your eyes are too pure to look at sin. You cannot look on wrong. Why then do you look with favor on those who do wrong? Why are you quiet when the sinful destroy those who are more right and good than they? And I have many, many more different translations. But we get the gist, don't we? Can I get a what what? Whereas I got a remark I want to share with you from Melissa. And I know there's more to it because when the girl sent it to me, look, I'm gonna show y'all proof, because look, when they when they send it to me, they, they take out. And the reason I know is because I do have a degree. <laughs> and so when a sentence starts with any way, no one starts a sentence like that. There's more context. I, there's some meat and potatoes somewhere in there that maybe the girls edited it out because they saw fit to. You see, they, they only send me what's necessary, right? But I want to give you this as an analogy, right? An example. But let me read this from Melissa. And it's for sharing insight on narc behavior. 
Good morning, Jesse. Hope you're well. Anyway, I was sitting watching one of your insightful videos when you talked about inti intimacy with an ark. Then I made a list. My sister thinks it should be on a t-shirt. I was like, my nark gave me plenty of D. Disruption, deception, deflection, discouragement, damage, destruction, distraction, delinquency, disarray, deviancy, disappointment, disrespect, discombobulation, devaluation, degrade, disharmony, discard, destroy. I got a lot of D over the years. <laughs> I appreciate you going through this lesson and learning advice from you. Thank you. And I have a wonderful, blessed weekend. Thank you, ladies in the office. <laughs> now look, the Melissa that wrote this is going to feel in a powerful way what it is that, I, that I'm saying, just like the many of you. But on the personal level, when I read these remarks, it touches different. And this is what I mean. It's like that song, Say my name, say my name. Chores, ñores, ñores, say my name, say my name. Because I don't know the metal part, but you, you, you might remember that song. Throw a remark if you do. I, I forget it. But it's kind of like that. Narcs wish you would call out their name, whether it be on a positive or a negative. It doesn't matter. They don't want to be... In, they don't want you to reach a point of indifference. They, they want to continue to exist. Do you understand? Because it, it translates to them that you still have feelings and they still have credibility. It, unearned. In other words, they're taking up real estate for free. And listen, I want you to remember how good it feels to hear your own name as a person of normalcy and balance. I want you to understand that feeling of euphoria when someone you respect reads something, giving honor. Can you imagine that times a thousand is what narcissists feel, whether it is negative or positive? And this is why it's so important that you understand they live for it. Don't feed the creatures, not even with a long stick. Unless you have to gray rock in a work condition, then make your money, boo-boo. you got to survive. But that's why it's important that you don't make friends or associates at work. You're there to make a return on investment, not to make family. No, that's where the line is drawn. And you don't allow that to disturb your peace. You see, narcissists are good at coming in on the slide. Even in the work conditions, they want to come in and maybe support you on something, but it's exaggerated support, overly supported and protected. You see, Narcissists understand the game full well and they need to appeal to you so that they can gr gain that trust but it's manufactured because it's not going through the process of time. Time you control. Remember the tea and meat? The tea and meat. I said it, meat, not now. Nah. Uh-uh. Meat. Money, energy, attention, and time. They're clout chasers. And if they can't get a piece of what you have, because they're not there for you when you were going through the work, they want to reap a benefit of not ever having to do the work. Warriors, those days are over. You woke up for a reason. You went through the boot camp because once you see it, you uh uh, you can't unsee that. Made a believer out of you. Now you know what mission you've got. Habakkuk, you know that book between Genesis and Revelations, lets you know what's next. And Narks. 
are going to be paying attention to you and peek playing peekaboo once in a while. It's what, look, it's what dumbasses do. Wouldn't you, Hoover, you? Shut up. Uh-uh. Wrong. Yes, you would. And if you fucked up the best thing ever happened to you, and now others, the flying monkeys, are telling them, you fucked up. Ooh, I wouldn't have listened to it. Whenever they try and discharge a projection on fellow narcissists, oh, you ought to see that little battle. It's your fault. I should have never listened to you. And the other one's going, well, yeah, you're retarded. You should have never listened to me. There's no winning between two dumbasses. It's hilarious. It's like the three suges, the three blind mice. And they'll go round and round and round. Your job is to be a spectator. You were once in the blood sport. You pulled your head out of your ass. Now you see them for who they are. But don't be acting like you ain't going to be hoovered. You're going to be hoovered. And you're going to be gang stalked every now and again. Folks are going to smear you that don't know you. And you should understand. You're living right then. Because when you were a part of the gang, you were probably a team leader, a badass. And they lost the most valuable player and miss it. I would hoover you. I would hoover me. Mm-mm. Y'all be like, uh-uh. A what? <laughs> Better wake up. Uh-uh, don't wait for another divine bitch slap. <laughs> you saw what happened last time, and that wasn't even the prayer, was it? And got your clarity just like that. Sure did. Watch what you ask for. Don't don't pray for patience. Uh-uh. God will put so many dumbasses in front of you so that you have the opportunity to exercise that patience you've been seeking. This is how powerful your voice is. You got you got angels waiting for their marching orders. Get out there and own it, Warriors. And I appreciate all your support. I really do. And look, actions speak louder than words. If you had time to say thank you, if you feel that the Narcissist Chronicle has blessed you in any kind of way, subscriptions. Do your part. It's our way of bitch slapping the devil. And I worry about answering for giving him a hard ass time. Because I want to become the greatest pain in the ass to the devil himself. Get out there, live in peace. You earned it. It's never goodbye. It's always until next time. Namaste, Warriors. Jesse, what are you doing today? We're going to skydive today. We're going to skydive. Leap of faith. <laughs> hey, that's what this is. Doing it for the tribe, the that's... warrior tribe. Do you know how high we're going? Did they tell you? 14,500 feet. Close. 14,500 feet, yep. And then we're going to be right. falling at? A high rate of speed. <laughs> very fast. We're going to be falling very fast. <laughs> we're going to be falling we're at 100, falling. 120 miles an hour. Sweet. Have you ever gone that fast before? No, I have not. Okay, are you ready to go that fast? I'm ready. Okay. We're going to do it today. <laughs> you got my back. Yep. Oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your face, but you know, your TI will have your All back. Right. All what right. made you want to skydive? What, what brought you here today? Facing fear. Yeah? Are you afraid of Facing heights? Facing fear, head on. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm afraid of not trying new hey, opportunities. There you go. I'm afraid of living in the woulda, shoulda, coulda, and I'm not going to do it. Lead and live by example. There you go. You heard it here first from Jesse. All right, you ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Woo! Hold me close.
close till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left And Turns the sun rays and on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways and on. sword fight, so I guess we'll have to call it a draw. There you go. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> Alright, when are you going to get your license now? I'm going to work on it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll well, be back. Jesse, All right. thank you for jumping with us at Scott oh, Lone Star. Man, do you have anything you'd like to mine. say? What an honor. Badass crew. I love it here. The hospitality is just phenomenal. Five stars. If there were ten, I'd give it to you. We'll take